I also want to say something about rookie quarterbacks. This is a bit of a theory that I have. We've seen rookie quarterbacks look really, really good this year, specifically Herbert and Burrow. And you wonder why, right? You wonder why rookie quarterbacks are looking so good. Is this just an? Is this just a special class? Is this kind of like, uh, you know, when LeBron and Carmelo were rookies and it was a little bit different? <clears throat> I want you to think about this. This is as easy as it can get playing as far as like in the game for a rookie quarterback as it ever has been in the NFL. Now, yes, preparation wise, very different as far as training camp and all that stuff. 100%. But I mean, in the game, during the four quarters, think about how much easier it is for these guys. Think about how much easier it is for these people or these quarterbacks to not deal with the crowd, not deal with the, with the noise, to be able to take their time, hear the you know hear everything, hear the coaches, make the play calls, uh, shift the offensive line, all of that. That is a really big deal. I remember right whenever coronavirus or quarantine kicked off. I remember in the Premier League over in over in um, Europe, all the European soccer leagues, they were saying that the no fans were benefiting the younger players because the younger players didn't have to deal with the nerves. They didn't have to deal with the idea that you know people are watching and people are are, are jeering me and booing me and all this other stuff, and they were just being able to play. And these younger players now are so much physically better in than they were back then. You know, a rookie like when Matt Leinart was a was a rookie, Matt Leinart wasn't physically more gifted than anybody else on the field. He was just another guy. But now you're seeing these super physically gifted players, even like Joe Burrow, even Justin Herbert, who are you know Justin Herbert, whatever he is, six six, has a cannon arm, thrown to seventy yards in the air, can run the ball. Joe Burrow. You know, he can run, he can throw, he can do all this stuff. They are allowed to let their physical abilities take over. And I think that's why you're seeing these players really, really succeed. I mean, think about what Justin Herbert did in New Orleans. He goes up to the line. There's no noise. He can shift the, the protection. He can shift this. He can call audibles. He can call the play. He can, he can do hard counts, whatever. How much different do you think that is for Justin Herbert when he has 80,000 people in the Superdome screaming, when he, when he cannot hear, when he can't do any of that stuff? You see how hard it is for people like Aaron Rodgers or Tom Brady when they go into the dome or when they go into these places. These just being practice, practice is whenever you can let your physical attributes really shine. And I think that's why you're seeing Herbert and uh, Burrow and whoever else you know, look this good. With that being said, I think Miami has to get, I think he has to get, um, or Miami has to get two of going now because of how easy it is to kind of begin everything. To be able to play in the NFL and see the NFL game for what it is without having the audience or without, ha- without having the fans, that is such a gift to a quarterback. To uh, holding him back, I'm usually on board of holding quarterbacks back, but because of, because of the crowd, because of the noise, because of all that being taken away, because it's almost like a practice, like a scrimmage, I think you have to get young quarterbacks in the game right now so that they can kind of, this is a get their feet wet moment besides our, uh, instead of just jumping in the deep end. This is the best time ever for a young quarterback to be playing in the game in NFL history. And I don't think it's even close. Uh, That's why, you know, I think we're kind of seeing a bit of a renaissance. Now, my question is how this will look in a year. Let's just say, let's just say that, Let's just say the next year is back to full stadiums. Everything's back to normal. It's going to be interesting to see how these quarterbacks deal with that because a sophomore slump is a real thing. Once NFL defenses have a full season of game tape and stuff like that on a quarterback or a running back or whatever, they can scheme against them. So it's already pretty tough to succeed in your second year. Now imagine if you're Joe Burrow or Justin Herbert or whoever, and you went a full season with no crowd noise. You've never, ever played in, a, in front of a crowd in the NFL. You've never had to deal with uh, what whatever an NFL quarterback has to deal with in the huddle and at the line of scrimmage uh, with a crowd. You never had to do that. So now, all of a sudden, you have an NFL defense scheming against you a full year of tape, and you have to deal with the crowd. I would not be surprised at all if we saw some of the most dramatic differences in a first year to second year ever uh, next year. And so we need to remember that. If, if Joe Burrow and Justin Herbert and maybe even Tua, whoever, if they take a big step back in year two, 
we need to go back to this and remember, oh yeah, they're they're for the first time in two years playing in front of a crowd. I'll say this too. People will say, well, James. Well, they'll say it much more rude than that. But they'll say, James, didn't Joe Burrow play in front of 100,000 people in college? Didn't he play in Baton Rouge? Didn't he play in front of... It's different. The noise isn't different, but their responsibilities are different. Justin Herbert, Joey Burrow, all these college quarterbacks are not calling the same complex uh, blocking schemes. They're not reading the defense the same. The game at the line of scrimmage from college to the NFL is completely different. It is so much more advanced. That's why players like Peyton Manning, Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers, players that dominate at the line of scrimmage, that's why they're so good in the NFL. Let's go to chat real quick. What I think the difference between Burrow and Herbert is, Burrow's mentality and coolness is far better than anyone else's as a rookie. Don't think a crowd changes his performance too much. What, he's been, what he has been saying in interviews and how he handles the huddle, his mic'd up game so impressive. Yeah, I think Joe Burrow is fantastic as far as that. I think he's been um, that in his entire career. But a lot of the times, you know, there's a reason that Matthew McConaughey is not an NFL quarterback. You know, coolness can only get you so far. So as much as I think that is good, as much as I think that that's important, as much as I think that he has been fantastic, I think that there's one of those deals where that will only get you so far. Just like on the flip side, a cannon arm thrown at 80 yards on the run can only get you so far. You have to be able to handle both sides of the game. So that's... um. That's one thing. Coolness won't get you an O line. Yeah, yeah. He can't go. He can't be super cool on Bumble and uh, swipe right. Uh, swipe right for an O line. Joey B made me want to watch the NFL. Yeah, I mean, he, hey, look, a cool quarterback. There's a reason chicks dig quarterbacks, right? It's like an innate thing. Whenever you're like, uh, like female deers, like male deers with big antlers. Females like good quarterbacks. You know, guys like good... It's just a natural, innate thing. Good, cool quarterbacks make me want to watch. You know what I'm saying? I want to watch Joe Burrow. I want to watch Justin Herbert. Um, Nothing better than a good quarterback. So, I'll say this, man. If you like Joe Burrow, if you have loved Joe Burrow and have watched Joe Burrow and have been all in on that, give Justin Herbert a look. He's a super exciting player. Uh, he, He is... He is incredible. I mean, I I, I was kind of down on Herbert because I thought he was raw. I didn't. I thought he. I thought he had some. I thought he had some um some learning to do even in college. And he's he's been so much better. He's been so much better in for the Chargers than he was at Oregon. He's really good. He's really really good. I'm I I would like I said if I had a vote right now I, I'd vote Herbert over um Arbero. You like Herbert or Burrow's long-term outlook better as far as the franchise putting a team around them to win? Honestly, man. Honestly, dude. I kind of hinted at it. It just popped in, so you may have already talked about it. I kind of hinted at it. I, I, I'll, I'll rephrase what I said, but I said right now, if I had a vote for Offensive Rookie of the Year, I would vote for Justin Herbert. And I think right now, if you take if you look at them as on a parallel of what they've done in the first five games, I think Herbert's been more impressive. Does that mean that I would take Herbert over Burrow? I'm not sure, but it's real close. It's real close. I I may honestly, I may if I was if everything was equal, if I was starting a franchise with the two quarterbacks, I might take Herbert. To be honest, the bigger story for the season is how Cincinnati's rookie linebackers and some of the secondary players are looking really good. Jesse Bates, next best safety. But yeah, I mean. I thought Burrow was going to run away with Office of Rookie of the Year and all that stuff, but I don't know. I mean, I don't think he's, I don't think he's done anything better than Justin Herbert. I really don't. And Justin Herbert has played better against better competition. I mean, it, you know, this the Chargers could easily be what four and one. I mean, they, they've blown games against the Bucks, against the Saints, against the Chiefs. I mean, how would Justin Herbert look? If that team would have, it, it, and Anthony Lynn is so bad, and we I say this every week, I and mean, I've been I've been dead on with these coaches. I've been dead on with which coaches are really failing. Anthony Lynn is really failing, and we'll talk about this in, during the Saints thing. But if they win those games, and all of a sudden Herbert beats the Chiefs, the Bucks, and the Saints, which I would guess at one point their team had probably had an eighty-five percent chance to win or greater. What are we saying then? You know, I mean, what are what's the narrative at that point? 
So let's move on here. But I just wanted to make that note about rookie quarterbacks and why I think they're succeeding right now with no with no fans. I think that is something that and this is something else. This is something else. I don't think anyone else in the media has said this. And so I want to go ahead and let everyone know that you're hearing this kind of stuff first right here on this stream. I don't think anyone else is talking about how these rookie quarterbacks are not dealing with crowd noise and why they look so damn good. 